Thank you so much for sticking with us. Welcome back to Morning Arts and TV with me, Malaki Velodara and Romeo Busiku. We are heavy on social media. You can also stream us live. We are live on Facebook and YouTube pages. And TV Uganda is the place to be. And you'll find the Morning Arts and TV live stream right there. We're getting into a take note conversation this morning and with the recent resumption of flights by Uganda Airlines, promoting Uganda has never been greater. Now, how to do it and how to harness this remains the challenge. And so that's why we are having marketers, you know, doing everything. Yes, to ensure that we harness this great opportunity and market our beloved country. So to have that conversation and just to get to understand what the marketing association um, right here in the country is doing, we do. We are actually joined, yes, by Mr. Yes, we are actually joined this morning by Mr. Paul Okwi. He is the president of the Uganda Marketers Society and he joins us right now in studio. Good morning and welcome. Thank you so much. Good Indeed. morning. How are you doing? Great. Now, please tell us, what are some of the challenges... Uganda marketers societies experiencing with regards to promoting tourism in Uganda? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, well, marketers are, are having a, a significant challenge, um, and, and not just marketers, but stakeholders across the tourism value chain um, of, you know, effectively positioning the brand Uganda. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not known for the best things in the world, and that's no reason as to why, that's actually the reason as to why not very many uh, tourists are streaming into the country. So we need to, one of the biggest challenges we have is our narrative mm -hmm. as a brand Uganda. Um, it is not really the best. It's about time that we deliberately, um, you know, change this narrative and make Uganda a lot more attractive mm -hmm. across the border. Right. When you talk about brand Uganda not yeah. being at the, that level of excellence, uh, what are some of those pointers that uh, would make, is actually making brand Uganda not to stand out? Okay, well, um, I think we have not uh, embraced uh, as stakeholders in the, in, the, in the various value chain of tourism. Mm -hmm. We have not em embraced the opportunities that, you know, the brand has, Uganda as a country has availed us. Did you know that Uganda has the best, um, you know, flora and fauna across the region? Indeed. Um, we have, you know, the fantastic River Nile source. We have, you know, uh, the highest third, fourth, fifth peaks in, uh, in, in Africa. Indeed. Absolutely. But we are not saying enough about this, and we are not attracting the tourists to come in. As a brand of fact, I think last year, mm -hmm. we had only about 1.8 million tourists coming in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even with that effort, we were only able to, the tourism sector was only about able to uh, contribute about 10% of GDP. Correct. We are able to do a lot more than that just like Kenya and, and Rwanda are doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it seems like Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania have the same products that we have. What are we doing different to beat this competition? I'll tell you something. We have a lot more uh, in terms of resources than um, our, our colleagues. We have the best climate. We, did you know that um, you know, compared to Rwanda, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda has you know, almost 40% arable land. True. We have the best we have the chimpanzees, we have the Makshun Falls, we have all these resources, but um, we are not harnessing them. And the reason why that's not happening is that, you know, the SMEs, we, we are sort of waiting for, I don't know, maybe the president to come down and, and, and <laughs> hand over some, so to redeem us or, some sort mm -hmm. of, or something like that, or maybe some donor funds. I think that the secret lies in, you know, we uh, as SMEs and mm -hmm. entrepreneurs and marketers mm -hmm. picking up this mantle and saying that we can actually identify these opportunities mm -hmm. and leverage them. So apparently we have almost double what the competition has. There you Kenya, go. Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda. Absolutely. So what is the problem? Is it, is it limited, you know, uh, advertising, limited funds to sell ourselves out there? What is the problem? I'll tell you one thing that... Um, you know, as, as marketers, we believe that you could have the fantastic product. You could have the best product. But if you Sit did on. not mm. show the world and, 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 and expose it, it, it you'll probably be like, uh, you know, winking at a, a beautiful woman in the, in the dark. So right now, Ugandans are winking at a beautiful we're, woman we're winking, in the dark. The, the outside world doesn't know what is happening. Absolutely not. So what different can we do to change this? So what, what we really want to promote and through this... Um, uh, from such as the marketplace, uh, yes. the, market, the marketer's fireplace. We want to identify, we want to tell the world that, look here, there are opportunities along the value chain. When a tourist comes into Uganda, 
Uh, a research was actually done by uh, Macquarie University Business School, and they mm. say that, look here, when a tourist comes into Uganda and they have $1,000 to spend, mm -hmm. they get to travel back with $600. Mm. It means that they are spending only 40% of what they are willing to, to spend. spend. Right. All right. Just because we are not saying enough, we're not saying that, you know, you can do a, a Tulambre tour around mm -hmm. the seven hills of Kampala. Mm -hmm. There are no brochures anywhere in the hotel to say that, look here, you can go bungee jumping, you can go uh, to Maction Falls, and right. there are all these wonderful So everything things. has to boil down to making that noise much 100%. more. A hundred percent. All right. So last year we did have 1.8 million tourists, tourists coming yes. through. And uh, I'm also an expert in this space, but on, on the service bit, yes. excellence in experiences. Uh, now, you and I know yes. it also is a key factor in marketing. Yes. And retention is number one. And we always Absolutely. say one good, amazing experience will multiply. That happy person will yes. be your marketer. Yeah, we're going to shout about it. So what are we not doing in terms of making sure that we retain and we harness this 1.8 to bring us more people? Well, uh, you see... Um, is it the experiences that are not 100%? Well, um, it, it's, a, it's a mixture of things, I must say. Um, it could be the experiences. Listen, I mean, when we talk about experiences, we're talking about are we investing into the best chefs? If a tourist is driving from the airport um, and they, they, they reach a craft shop right, right on, on, on Entebbe Road, uh, what kind of experience are, they, are we giving them? A, you know, this is it, buy or leave. Uh, when they go to a restaurant, <laughs> buy or leave. Uh, buy or leave. <laughs> that I mean, happens a lot. It does happen a lot. <laughs> yes. When they walk into our, our, our business uh, restaurants, investing a bit of, uh, you know, in investing into having the best chefs mm. that can cook, you know, really good local uh, food and all that kind of stuff. So I will tell you that I believe strongly that the, our key differentiator for, is for marketing will be the experience. Mm. We need to sell our experience. And we're not short of that. We have a, a, a variety of, of, of experiences, cultural experience, religious experiences that right. we, can, we can sell. And we're just not doing enough. And over and above that, it's not just about what you sell, but what is felt on ground 100%, is critical. Uh, 100%. Right. So 1.8 million, it's really great one last right. year. Mm -hmm. But then the problem is those who come yeah. are adamant to return because of the poor service delivery in our hotels. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big, big problem. What are you doing to rein in on these tours and travel companies that are not at par with the standard that you desire as okay. Uganda um, Marketer Society? You know, as Uganda Marketer Society, we are working together with the um, um, you know, Uganda uh, Tourism Board. Mm -hmm. And we have actually invited them as key stakeholders for uh, this fireplace. And um, what we're really trying to do is we are trying to encourage and it's not just uh, tour operators it is the entire value chain you must realize mm -hmm. that when a tourist walks into this country um, they have money in their pocket that True. should belong True. to us right. all right so it is up to us to offer the handshake and say hey tourist um, I, I, I'm doing this. Oh, I'm doing this. I'm offering this. I'm offering that. And they will be willing to spend. So it's not just two operators. Mm -hmm. It's, it's telecos. It is um, craft shops. It's banking. It's insurance. It's, it's, it's a broad cross-section of stakeholders that must step up the plate. Right. But tell you what, it's easy to sit here and say uh, they need to step up. But where do they? If, so, if I have uh, some saved up resources, where can I invest mm -hmm. this money and, and constructively uh, believe that there will be some positive return on investment? Now, mm -hmm. that's the conversation that not too many people know. Mm -hmm. and, and perhaps we want to put uh, government um, to share this information. You, you know, we are, we are in a very data-driven, um, where are the tourists, when they come to Uganda, where do they stop first? Right. True. Um, what's their next stopover? Do they, how long do they take in Entebbe? How long do they take in Kampala? What are the sites? How many are visiting to? So that you can position your opportunities more deliberately. Mm -hmm. So that when you invest these little resources that SMEs have, we are really targeting and speaking a lot more to SMEs, mm -hmm. they can actually get meaningful mm -hmm. um, return. You Indeed. know, Mr. Okui, we are in a digital era. Uh, and um, uh, we've always been talking about how corporates, how SMEs can, 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 can skill themselves further to be sure that, you know, they're milking that social media 100%. bit to market themselves better. What is it that you're not doing? You're in the space, you're a marketer. 
you've seen how different stakeholders are utilizing the social media space. Yes. Where is the gap and more, what more can be done to utilize social media to market and make that noise that you're talking about, about Uganda? You're on to something right. I, I mean, listen, one of our panelists is, uh, is actually a digital marketing expert with one of uh, the telecoms in Uganda and also strategic alliances uh, manager. And we have realized that many SMEs believe that this is a space that they do not, they cannot understand. afford right. or probably not even understand. Right. And we're saying that, look here, um, as a matter of fact, we want to demystify this notion mm -hmm. that this digital space is this, this amorphous elephant that we just cannot comprehend. There are so many opportunities inherent we for SMEs, it. yes, mm -hmm. that they can promote and make their businesses visible. Mm -hmm. You can actually have um, geo-targeted um, opportunities for tourists who have arrived at the airport or within the Entebbe location or within the Kampala location, and you speak to them. You have targeted messages. You don't have to put an ad in the papers right. for an SME. Right. Mm -hmm. You can speak targeted uh, to, um, you to, know, your niche. to your niche. Right. And so all these opportunities are there, and they are possible. We just need to tell them how, mm -hmm. and that's really the essence of our fireplace. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, some of the tourists, when they come, they complain about the poor infrastructure, which incapacitates their mobility from one yeah. point to another. And another point they stress is there are no internal flight connections in the country mm -hmm. to connect them from one place to another. So yeah. they spend more time in one area getting to another, which they have complained about. Yes. Now, how has this incapacitated your efforts to promote tourism in Uganda? Well, I'll tell you what. I, I, I must begin by really appreciating that the government has, you know, significantly invested in, in tourism, True. Uh, or rather in inf infrastructure. And um, there's still a lot more to be done. Um, however, the beauty about this is that when a tourist gets into the country, mm -hmm. they are primed to spend. They are willing to spend. So you tell them that we need to, to, to take eight hours to travel to Kidepo National Park, they'll be like, yeah, let's, right. let's do this, right. mm -hmm. because they're already primed. The challenge is that at some point, like last year, during the peak season, there were no, tour, there were no vans to, to, to travel. There was an absolute over, you know, um, there were so many tourists that, you know, we couldn't even, um, you know, transport them effectively. Mm -hmm. The demand was way more mm -hmm. than the supply. Totally overwhelmed. Uh, totally overwhelmed. Mm. And then... You know, and you will, you will, you will know from uh, you know the travel agency that sometimes they even have to refund. Right. Yes, they have to refund the tourists That's because you know what happens. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Mm. So I, I believe that the government has done a lot. Mm. Uh, there's still a lot more True. to be done. However, the point here is that you know, if the SMEs and the private sector can can tap into these opportunities, mm -hmm. it's about you know the, we may not have the inland flights, True. but. But we need the vans. We need we need to okay. take these guys on on, on trips and, okay. and and boat rides. Because and those inland flights yeah. are really 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 important. Because yes. our competition, yes. Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, have all this. Yet Absolutely. they have fewer resources yeah. than Uganda. Yeah. Now you get my point. A hundred percent. Listen, we we've started this journey, and and, and God bless Uganda Airlines. Mm. Um, we we've started the journey. For resuming, <laughs> yes. For resuming, <laughs> yes. Um, I am sure that progressively this is going to improve but we are not going to wait yes we okay. cannot afford to wait right let's start from where we are if mm -hmm. it is a, a a van that you have and you can you can you can transport uh, five six tourists let's let's jump into that and okay. let's do that mr yeah. okui you know when you look at the uh, tourism scale in terms of who is a tourist there's the local tourists who are the nationals of that particular country mm. there's the regional tourists there's the you know continental tourists yeah. and also there's now the you know Europeans or the whites or yeah. them coming from other continents. Yeah. As Africans, there's something that is ailing us. We always hold in high esteem. Yes, the whites. All right. There's a lot of racism happening. True. Mm -hmm. We fight each other mm -hmm. as black Ab people. Absolutely. You go to these tourist attraction centers, um, service delivery points, the hotels, uh, no, the, you know, these particular shops that sell, you know, different ornaments, da da da, anything, provided you have this black skin mm -hmm. within the African continent, you won't get excellent service compared to anyone showing up with the lighter skin. Mm -hmm. What are we doing to make sure that that mindset shifts? Because you end up losing a lot of money. Yeah that a local tourist could actually have spent just because you didn't treat them well. Absolutely. And if 
I mean, service is critical it's to pursue. Yes, it's a key differentiator to pursuing someone to actually spend. Mm -hmm. You did say that you know this even you know the tourists come through to Uganda with for example, a thousand USD, but they end up spending only 40% of that, 60% is lost. And all that boils down to that bit of service delivery and excellence. So with that in mind, what yeah. are we doing to, sh to change the mindsets of the Africans towards their own fellow black people to make sure that we also harness on their potential to spend on tourism? I'll tell you, I'll tell you something. Um, if we're to pick um, you know, insights from countries like South Africa, South Africa spends um, close to 70 million US dollars on marketing the country mm -hmm. um, out, 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 outside. And they spend about 10 million dollars, um, you know, in country marketing. Um, I remember when Uganda actually uh, had a campaign where we, uh, there was a marketing effort in, 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 in the CNN and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. with about a million US dollars and mm -hmm. the whole country almost went in uproar. <laughs> um, the truth of the matter is that if it doesn't start with us, there has to be a very deliberate budget. And, and, and sometimes I believe that um, we marketers have perhaps, perhaps not been uh, very vi vigilant about this. And, and, and well, we have woken up. Indeed. And we are saying that we need to market. We need to convert um, our, our, own. our own. We right. need to have some mind shift, some mind. People, people travel to Kenya. Did you know that yes. uh, we have um, destination weddings these days? Mm -hmm. uh, and people travel to uh, the coast to have weddings and stuff. And mm -hmm. you know, they, they, do, they don't want to go to the Maction Falls or Queen Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's because it's a, it's a mindset. People are traveling to Dubai for honeymoon and all that kind of stuff because they don't appreciate. Um, so in marketing, like I mentioned, you may have a fantastic product, granted. But we need to now start marketing not only to the external, mm. but even to the But internet. Mr. Okui, over and above just marketing, yeah. because you see, someone will tell you, and I'm sure you also get into these circles with yeah. your friends, and they will tell you, if it's a honeymoon destination or if I just want to go on holiday, a majority of Africans would tell you if they have the money, they would not have a destination Africa. Why? Because of that poor experience, because of their skin color. Yeah. And they're never given that esteem by their very own. Yes. You know, so what will be done? What can be done to change that perception of the stakeholders? Because this is money being lost, mm -hmm. and uh, local tourists do have the money. Absolutely. Africans do have the money Absolutely. to spend within Absolutely. the continent, mm -hmm. but they don't because of that mm -hmm. aspect of, hey, I won't be treated, and hey, why should I be treated badly, and yet I'm spending? You're not doing me a favor. Yeah, just, just, to add on, just to yes. add on what Mala is saying, yes. just to under, for you to understand yes. the magnitude yes. of the situation. Let's say I show up to this tour and travels agency. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wearing my flip-flops. Yes. They will deny me entrance, <laughs> but then a white man will come in in his shorts and flip-flops, and they'll be like, oh, chief. <laughs> come in. Yes. yes. Uh, what are we doing to stop this? Listen, um, we cannot, as Uganda Marketer Society, cannot say that we will, you know, completely um, own up and, and change these mindsets. I think it is uh, a, cultural, a cultural shift. It, it has to, it is an effort that we all have to. Stereotypical uh, thing. Absolutely. Like, I mean, he's black, he's listen, listen, this is mm -hmm. even happening, not, not just here. Uh, it happens in South Africa. We've just had a, a very Zimbabwe, ugly yeah. e episode of, yes. you know, black on black, um, you know, Attacks, issues and yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, it is not, it's not predominant here. It's, it's, uh, Ugandans are pretty peaceful people, I must say. Um, however, um, that, that, that stigma that, that, you know, um, it, it needs to be, it, it has to be a deliberate cultural, uh, we call it behavior marketing. Mm. Mm -hmm. We need to sell these places. We need to improve experience. And that's why um, I didn't want to get into it. But right after the fireplace, mm -hmm. we actually are going to have a, f a master class in November, November 8th. Mm -hmm. And what we are going to be doing is a whole day, as opposed to the fireplace, which mm -hmm. is an evening. Mm -hmm. We have a whole day of training, not on just digital, but custom experience. Also, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, to these stakeholders in the in the in the value chain of tourism, Indeed. just to equip them, and they need to understand that. You see, when you look at me funny, um, mm. I I am going to be thinking, but 
you know, you, you don't appreciate me. Mm -hmm. And you don't deserve and my coin. And you, you don't deserve <laughs> my <laughs> coin, <laughs> absolutely. Right. So, but when the, when the foreigners come, we are, you know, on, we, we, are, we bend backwards, mm. we kiss their toes and all that kind of stuff, which is really good. Mm -hmm. And we don't know that, you know, when they come and they leave, you stay with me here. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I am your best. Indeed. So, Mr. Paul, yes. let's, let's forget the foreigners for a while. Yes. Let's talk about our people down here in Uganda. Absolutely. Domestic tourism. Yes. What is Uganda Marketers Society doing to attract the local population to travel us their own tourist destinations in the country? Okay, so what we are doing as a society, mm -hmm. um, you know, we are a society of uh, marketers yes. from different, um, you know, uh, tourism is just something that we have picked up this year as, as an interest point. Why? Because of the, you know, the opportunities that are, you know, with the airline, you know, and all these other opportunities, they focus, they re-energized focus on tourism through Uganda Tourism Board. So yes. we are starting this com by putting a conversation at the marketer's fireplace and saying, hey, Ugandans, we have an opportunity. Show us the, we want to show by the panelists and our keynote speaker, we want to show Ugandans where these opportunities are. So we are enabling a conversation that can happen that we would believe uh, stakeholders, entrepreneurs, SMEs can take an advantage of. Okay. So we are enablers and we are, we are working together with Uganda Tourism Board and all the other stakeholders, Uganda uh, Tourism Association, Uga uh, the Uganda Association of Travel Agents. And we want to, we want to make this an agenda, but we're not, because we are tired of waiting mm. for the government. Indeed. Yes. We yeah. did, and I believe you know that this is a big problem. Having local people, I mean, someone hasn't been to Maxon Falls, someone hasn't been mm. to Elgon, yeah. and they are in Uganda here, and the white person is moving all the way from the United States to see the same. Yes. So my worry was, how can we tap into this local, local, local yes. market? Because I, b I think there's big, big potential. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, um, we, we need to start this uh, right from the infant ages, mm -hmm. stages. Um, the children. That's I mean, cool. I, I don't know when, when uh, back in the day we used to... We used to, to do it. Yeah, yes, we used to do yes, it. It doesn't happen that do much these days. Right. And, and yet we have resources. Mm -hmm. Ua has fantastic buses. Mm -hmm. We have Tulambule buses all around. But, you know, um, we also need to bring on board um, the corporate stakeholders to, you know, we need to start seeding this mm -hmm. uh, right from the infancy. So that by the time people grow up, they it's are. In it's, it's in them. Right. This is a behavior change. It's not going to happen, um, you know, overnight. Okay. But we need to start. You know, um, the other factor that uh, you know kind of eats into the numbers with regards to tourism within Africa is the question of security and the question of infrastructure vis-a-vis -vis safety. Um, just the other day, actually over the past three months, it's been accidents, road accidents, upon road accidents, at least every single week. Just a few that's weeks back, true. two weeks, you know, we yeah, had road accidents. True. And you know that the beauty of tourism is in that, you know, taking that road tree yeah, and true. tourism coming through and having that confidence that, hey, we're going to be safe on this road. Yeah. Over and above that also safety in terms of national security. Yeah. So speak to that and, uh, and, and how marketers can go about just, you know, um, how will I put it, not, c not, 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 not covering or not sugarcoating, but being you know, helping out to the critical stakeholder to ensure that that is sorted out. Because we know that security is a critical thing. Yes, if a sure. tourist is actually, you know, looking at different countries to visit, number one, top of the list will be security. Mm. That's true. Because uh, you remember that scenario where a foreigner was kidnapped? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They asked for ransom, yeah, yeah. then right. the money was tracked, but right. then they were still caught. Yeah. Yes. It sends a bad message. Uh, let, let, me be ju let me just be blunt and to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, listen, yes. I, I think we have security challenges here, but we must recognize that this, this is not endemic to Uganda. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, there are more people killed in the US. Right. Indeed, indeed. There are more people, there are people starving in the UK. I mean, if you've traveled, you, you'll, you'll be shocked at, at what is happening there. But the difference here is that these countries have deliberately and I'm not, and I'm, I'm not undermining the fact that, you know, security is a key, mm. it's a key issue. But, you know, we here, you know, reporting, you guys are the experts in media. <laughs> but bad news somehow so. just, just sells here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And to counter that bad, nu that bad news, mm. you unfortunately need to invest into spreading good news. Yes. And that's what is not, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. So whereas, and, and I must say, Uganda, you, Uganda is ranked as one of the, most irrespective of the yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So the government has done quite a bit. Mm -hmm. However, 
um, you know, the other stakeholders, uh, you know, we are not selling all these good uh, points mm -hmm. around security. Uh, yeah. Suffice yeah. to say that there are a few challenges here yes. and there, but they all happen in other countries. Why mm -hmm. is it that CNN will not say too much about, they, they will report and they will, but they won't dwell on that. They will mm -hmm. say, listen, we have sorted out our issues. We have stabilized the country. When we have an unfortunate incident here, mm. it's going to run in the media mm. for two weeks. For two weeks. And Not nobody really. nobo nobody <laughs> ever comes up to say that, look here, the security forces have sorted this out. But it's what, all good. But, it's, but, but on the know, so I think side, it's just a perception right, thing. Right. I really think it's a mm. perception thing. Okay. And perception in marketing is really every, is reality. Mm. It could be right because okay, in, right. In, the, in the United States, two tourists were arrested in Iran for simply taking selfies. Yeah. But CNN only took on this story for maybe a day or two. And that was it. <laughs> and that uh, was it. Life moves <laughs> you, you, on. And, you know, and then they, they focus on the positive stories. Right. Yes. And, and you know, the media space is quite, uh, how will I put it, complex. And, 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 and on the flip side, as much as we have that mandate mm -hmm. to yeah. inform to the report public, it's, it's our critical core mm. of our business. Ah, Over and about that, on the flip side, mm -hmm. what can marketers do to, to make sure that they harness that security pointer to attract as many tourists as possible. Well, How uh, can we intertwine that in our messaging? Absolutely, and, and I think that's a very key point. Um, like I said, uh, we need to work together with security. We are not experts on security, but we must recognize that once um, a tourist, um, you know, if an embassy flags off a tourist threat and all that kind of stuff, that impacts us negatively mm -hmm. and tourists. So we mm -hmm. need to ensure that we can continually engage them mm -hmm. to change that narrative, mm -hmm. the conversation. Now, Mr. Paul, the reason why we hinted most of these questions yes. was because we wanted to demystify the rumors surrounding these issues, and you did perfectly well. And right. I hope the tourist, foreign tourists who was watching has and now a different ones. idea of Absolutely. what Uganda really Absolutely. is. We, we are not what is published in the news no, no, all the no, time. No. We are a very peaceful country. We <laughs> we love everyone, very oh, diversified. Absolutely. And uh, absolutely. At even the domestic tourists right now feels like, yes, yeah. Uganda Market Society values me as a domestic tourist. Together with the other stakeholders. Now, let's talk about one final problem. Uganda is a landlocked country. How has the fact that Uganda is a landlocked country affected your operations with regards to promoting tourism in Uganda? Well, listen, um, for me, I think that's just, uh, it, 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 it could be, but I don't think it is reality because they are. Because like you said, uh, tourists are moving from coast to coast easily to do marriages, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. but they can't do that in Uganda because Absolutely. we have no port. And, and, and listen, um, we, we are making fundamental strides, mm -hmm. Uganda Airlines and all that kind of stuff. We are mm -hmm. trying to demystify this border. The, the world is, is, is borderless mm -hmm. as we know it. And what's happening right now is that um, the more we can market these, uh, these resources, mm -hmm. right. tourists will do anything. People will do anything to come and experience. You see, when you're selling an experience, it is what attracts you. Correct. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so this should not be hindrance. No, it shouldn't because right. because we are naturally indoors. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Okui, finally, as we wrap this up, mm. um, there's this particular f market fireplace coming. Yes. Through. Uh, it's going to be tomorrow. Give us the details as we wrap this up. Okay. So tomorrow we will be having um, our marketers fireplace. We will have our keynote speaker. We had initially um, sp uh, confirmed. Um, um, Dr. Betty Adero, who is the chief executive officer uh, at, at Kenya Tourism Board, mm -hmm. but due to official, um, you know, her official program, mm -hmm. she, she, she won't be able to make mm -hmm. it. Um, she had to be, she was called on to some other official tasks. So mm -hmm. we have been really privileged to have uh, Ms. Pal uh, Huareo uh, Kakoza, who is, you know, uh, the president of the Uganda Tourism Association. Mm -hmm. She is also the chairperson of Uganda Association of uh, Travel Agents, oh. and she is the Seashells Ambassador mm -hmm. of Tourism to Uganda. Okay. She will be our keynote speaker. Okay. Okay. Awesome, tickets? awesome, awesome. Tickets at how much? Uh, tickets are just going for paltry 100,000 <laughs> for, <laughs> for non-members. But for our, Such a marketer. <laughs> for our 300 or so members, it yeah. is absolutely free. So, All Mr. Right. Paul, make your final Thank appeal you. to the would-be tourists out there. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, um, Uganda is a safe, uh, is a, is a safe uh, country. We have the best resources there are. And um, my appeal, appeal is mm -hmm. really to the various entrepreneurs, to the SMEs, 
to the banks, telecoms, and all the stakeholders in the value chain, there are opportunities for businesses and brands in Uganda. Okay. And we need to know these opportunities. That's why they should attend the fireplace. You've had it from Mr. Paul Okui, the president of Uganda Marketers Society, pitching tourism in Uganda. If you're out there, please. Uganda is open and welcome. Security is paramount. <laughs> it is, it <laughs> no is. problem. No, no problem, problem in Uganda. No problem in Uganda. Just come and we have fun. My name is Romy Busuku and I'm here with Malawi. Now I'll take a very short break. We'll be right back with more.